Right. So, so I, I, I've almost been doing the same. So I haven't had too much focus on power profiling just yet, just purely because I'm trying to get these, these, um, these core 12 profiles settled and done and, and take all of the information that I've been getting on the forum and also a couple of emails and that type of thing and uh, compiling them, putting them together. I'm trying to take as much information out as I possibly can. Um, uh, I had two questions yesterday that were that were quite quite cool um, and a little bit challenging. The one question was, you know, is there a difference between roasting the profiles at 100 grams or roasting the profiles at 120 grams uh, of coffee in the chamber? And the other question was, um, roasters around the world think about uh, first crack as a uh, as a development point in roasting, which we've discussed before, um, or the start of the development point in roasting, and should we be going um, hard and a bit aggressive into first crack, or should we be tapping off our temperature and effectively removing a little bit of the, the, the temperature, or slowing it down a little bit before first crack, about a minute 20, a minute 30 before first crack. Um, do, does anyone have kind of questions on the second one, the second question about kind of first crack and and tapping it off, why are we teeing up a lot of energy into first crack? Um, we, we kind of went through this in depth, I think it was two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, something like that. Um, are there any questions? Is anyone finding that, that it's, it's kind of weird and you look at your profiles and you think to yourself, why is Wayne doing this and why do these profiles work like this around first crack? No. Okay. Well, good. Then that that sorts of that then. Um, and then the second one was, you know, 100 grams versus 120 grams. And is there a reason why we did 100 grams, or is there a reason why we haven't done 120 grams? And do they work the same way? Um, out of everyone on the forum today, is anyone roasting the core profiles with 120 grams? Or are you all doing it at 100 grams? Or are there some of you that are trying kind of different grammage on it? I always roast 120 for everything I do. Okay. Yeah, okay, I've perfect. done mostly 120, but a fair bit of 110 and some 100. Okay, perfect, perfect. Shaz, any comment from you? I mean, have you been doing 120 or you've been doing kind of 100? Um, I, I've just stick to 100. Um, okay. I noted that you you would also you did it, so I thought, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do the same. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. So, so, so there is a little bit of method in my madness. Um, the method in my madness is that. Um, so, so let me first state this. Um, to roast 120 and to roast 100, 100 grams or 120 grams um, on the core profiles, there shouldn't be any difference from a roasting perspective with that extra 20 grams in. Um, it is uh, 12. It's probably one sixth of the of the roast volume. Um, and and what I found on the pro what I found on the profiles personally is that when I do 120. Um, and I never put 120 in. I'm kind of sitting at about 119.5, 119.8, 120. I try and I try to be quite specific about the weight that I put in. Um, I found that there's very little change between 100 grams and 120 grams. The only thing that I might find, I might find um, on certain profiles, specifically the 900 to 1,200 um, altitude profiles, is I find that my um, my first crack is slightly, uh, sorry, slightly uh, slower than what I'm doing on 100 grams. So my development percentage, instead of me finding, for example, a 25, 26 development percentage, I kind of drop down to about a 23, 24% development percentage, um, if that makes sense. Um, that's the only difference that I find. I find that when you go to the higher 
profiles, like your 1,200 to 1,500 and even higher than that, find that there's very little difference between profiles um, or between batches from 100 to 120. Um, I like to use 100 grams purely because if I buy a kg of coffee, 100 grams gives me 10 portions. Um, and I've, I've always kind of been a stickler for stuff like that. Um, maybe I'm just simple and I like round numbers. But um, there, there really is no other reason for me doing 120 or 100 grams versus 120. Um, well, there is another reason. I, I do find that roasting 100 grams, I am allowed to get a little bit more out of the roaster. And I'm allowed to push the roaster or manipulate the roaster a little bit more. And that comes down to, oh, sorry, that kind of is, is a flow from roasting on drum roasters. And on drum roasters, typically people say to you, you should only use anything between 85 to 90% of the weight in the drum roast. Sorry, of the, com of the complete drum. Um, and there was a point of roasting where I used to roast like that. And then I decided, no, you know what, Bill, if you're building a 15 kg roaster and you've customized or you've, you've built the burners at a size that it should handle that 15 kgs of coffee mass, why should you be doing anything less than 15 kg? Um, so I experimented with that quite extensively, and I found that um, I found that you could roast 15 kg in a 15 kg roaster quite comfortably, and you could get a really good result out of it. Um, so that's just a challenging theory that I've been challenging around that. Um, I like the fact that I can control. I like the fact that I can control the roaster better with 100 grams in it even 110 grams in it, 120, absolutely perfect. But I really don't have much room to move with 120. You know, you pop the profile on and it just goes. Um, whereas I, I like the room to move with 100. In that saying, I have roasted profiles at 100, uh, 100 grams and I have roasted profiles at 120 grams. And I find that there's maybe a 10 second to 20 second change uh, in the profile. And what, I, what you might have to do if you are roasting is you might, if you want to be really finicky about it, is you might have to go to the, the cornering or you might have to go to the boost and you might have to manipulate those slightly. Um, but that's really all you'll have to do. I did that with a, a Cafe Logic user yesterday um, with a decaf. They were roasting a decaf coffee and his, uh, the decaf profile that I put as one of the 12 core profiles he then changed to a, another decaf origin, which was the uh, sugarcane decaf origin that uh, Coffee Workshop sells. And um, he was now started using um, 120 grams of coffee. And all that we did was simply all that we did was we just took one of his boosts and we just, upped, uh, sorry, we just decreased his boost by 10 seconds. And we kept the boost the the zone boost we kept that all together we just literally decreased his zone from 630 to 615 um and all that he wanted to do was just to avoid a little bit more of that uh dump and flick and we managed to get that and he was happy with that uh, so that's typically the only changes you would make to that um uh, I probably have to go back and roast a couple of uh, more profiles or with 120 grams just to double check myself a little bit more. But I haven't noticed any huge changes. Justine, you're getting a good results um, and you're happy with the results that you're getting on the profile, um, I'm assuming. So it, and I've looked at your profiles and, and they look really good. So I wouldn't think that the extra 20 grams would make a difference. That's, that's just my assumption. Um, mm -hmm. But I if anyone else, yep. the number of times I roast, so that extra yeah. twenty grams is another cup of coffee. Oh, absolutely, Jesse. But if I look at your profile and your logs that you send, I mean, you're spot on with those logs, you know, and and they kind of match my logs that I'm roasting, and they're matching my logs I'm roasting with a hundred grams. Um, and you are taking it to the the more extreme part of the roasting cycle where you're going a lot darker and a lot higher um and yes, generally i'm doing it by the second crack so i'm listening for something so whether it's 100 grams or 120 i'm just adjusting at the time so 
Yep. Uh, well, absolutely. And, and that kind of brings me, leads me into what I was about to say was, was my second crack is probably five seconds, 10 seconds before yours, if I have to look at the logs. So I, I, I wouldn't say there's much of a difference. Um, the other thing was, and I got a question yesterday about roasting coffee on with the profiles, and they're not the, the, the core profiles, the 12 core profiles. This was one of the original profiles that were done for Cafe Logic. Um, and a customer was complaining that he couldn't get, he was roasting a, um, he was roasting a Brazilian coffee, and he, was comp well, he wasn't complaining, he was just challenging the fact that he was roasting on this specific profile, and he wasn't getting the taste that he would have liked to have, you know, have received out of the coffee. Um, we then sent him the core profile and recommended that he roast from the 900 to 1,200, which he then did. He then got a better flavor, but then he started challenging why, or not challenging, he started asking the question, why is the profile X and why is the profile Y? When, you have, um, when you've been taught as a classical roaster that um, rate of rise, your ROR should always decrease. You've been taught as a classical roaster to preheat your roaster or uh, pre-cycle your roaster for a period of 30 minutes to 40 minutes. And that's effectively just warming the entire thing up. It's like preheating your oven. Um, and effectively, when you get your first crack, typically you want to be uh, pulling that heat out of your, or sorry, you want to be removing a little bit of heat uh, going into first crack. Um, and that should give you a nice little exit out of first crack. It should, if you've got enough heat in the roaster in the beginning. Now, if you just follow the, the classic rules of roasting, with the cafe logic, unfortunately, some of those rules don't apply. And when they do apply, they're, they're, uh, they're a little bit, they're, they're, they work a little bit finicky um, within the roast. Um, so um, I just wanted to kind of stress with everyone that, that roasting on the cafe logic, you, you've got to take yourself out of the You've got to take yourself out of the, the standard drum roaster or the classical drum roaster way of roasting coffee, purely because it's not a drum roaster. It is, a, it is an air roaster. It's a fluid dead style roaster. Um, so the, the technical aspects of roasting just have to change slightly. It doesn't mean that we can't get a, a forever decreasing ROR and a forever increasing um, volume of power coming in. So i.e. being flame, i.e. being gas, or in this case with Cafe Logic, electricity coming in, passing through the element. Um, it doesn't mean we can't get that. But when we find that we don't have a, or when we find that we're tasting a coffee and we want to get a little bit more out of that coffee, then we, we might have to challenge the, the norm. We might have to challenge the status of normal drum roasting. And that might push us into a bit of an uncomfortable position. But if it does push us into a bit of an uncomfortable position, and we get the results, well then, you know, is that not roasting? Is that not what you should be doing, you know? Otherwise, what is the point of buying a item of equipment that you can manipulate and change along the way? So um, I don't know if anyone has any views on that or, or anyone can share something on that. Um, but uh, that does need to be explained to Cafe Logic users because often you would look at drum roasters and you would go, well, why isn't my coffee reacting the same way as it would react in a drum or react in a standard roaster? Well, the fact of the matter is it's like comparing an apple and a peach. You know, they're both fruit and they both taste like fruit and you can both use them in a fruit salad, but they're very, very different items. So does anyone kind of have any, any questions on that or, um, or want to make any comments on that? we're better off if we've never used a drum roaster and we're starting off with an air roaster it's the simplest isn't it well well yes and no mark i think yes and no i, I say no because obviously you know to have multiple experiences is, is really good um but but i say yes because absolutely you can learn new techniques and you can learn new ways of doing it um I think the key, key is, is to look at coffee as very, very subjective in flavor and very subjective in, in, or very um, uncontrollable in how it works. You know, we look at coffee and we've got, we've got a thousand beans in a Cafe Logic at one time, which means in a drum roaster, you could have 
4,000, 500,000 beans in a drum roaster. And all of those beans are grown at different altitudes on one farm. Then they're all processed and processing reacts very differently to each bean. And then they react very differently to heat that you apply to them at a specific point of the roast. So, you know, what works for one roaster as a technique might not necessarily work for another roaster as a technique. You know, um, I can tell you what Cafe Logic's done for me is it's taught me or, or offered me the ability to rethink the way that I think or, or re, re-understand roasting and, and re-engineer my own way of roasting. And it's taught me how to roast on a air roaster. And I've tried to, in the beginning, apply the traditional classic drum roaster technique to air roasting. And they just, I just found they didn't work. Um, until I just opened up and started to explore these these things, um, yeah. So so yes, I, I I believe Mike, it's both positive and negative. You know, um, I think the thing around it is, is we shouldn't be too hell bent on the fact that that we can't change and we can't develop and we can't learn. Um, and I'm talking from a cafe logic perspective. Uh, we've all bought the Cafe Logic because we can put a profile into it, we can roast our coffee, and we can get the coffee out that we want. Noted. Beautiful. And that's as simple and as easy as it is. But what happens if you can't find the coffee that you usually find? Or what happens every 8 to 10 months when the coffee that you usually use is now a slightly different coffee? still comes off the same area, but it's been grown differently. There's been a drought in the country that you buy from over the last 10 months, and that's affected. Uh, the farmer's decided he's going to process slightly different, you know. Now, now you're not getting the taste that you used to. Now, where do we go? Well, let me adjust and let me play with the Cafe Logic profile. Because it can't adjust automatically to your coffee. Your coffee, or well, the profile almost has to adjust to the, the coffee. And only you as the user can actually do that. Um, so we, I, my kind of thing is you can't get too rigid on on how you view roasting because if you do you might be left kind of you might be left in the past a little bit um i don't know if anyone shares feelings on that sorry to be annoying i just came in just as you uh, at the end of that question what are you no it's fine matt we were just talking about you um, oh. <laughs> So it's all good. No, Matt, I was just saying, you know what, we just, just, just uh, the question in summary was, uh, I was just asking, I've had a couple of questions about, um, and, and honestly, I've had a couple of questions on forums about um, why, why, is the, why is rate of rise not decreasing 110% um, like we read up in, in manuals and like we read up in books? And um, why is our first crack, why is the reaction going into our first crack not how it should be? It should be in inverted commas, like we read in uh, manuals and we read in books and we read on blogs. Um, and majority of the people that are writing books and writing manuals and, and blogging are all traditional drum roasters. Um, and it's, I, I don't think we can compare the Cafe Logic being an air roaster to a drum roaster. I don't think we're giving uh, any of the roasting styles enough credit and enough justice by doing that. So it was really um, asking the question, does anyone kind of have, want to share any opinion on that? Or, um, or you know, we're just very fortunate, like Mark says, that we, we've started roasting without ever roasting on a drum roaster, and we're kind of learning a new way on how to roast. Mm. Yeah. Something to think about, I guess. Um, but yeah, that, that was really, that was really the just and the question around it is, is, you know, what are your expectations from a Cafe Logic? Is it to roast coffee exactly the same way as you would roast on a 15 kg uh, pro back roaster? Or is it to roast coffee a little bit, definitely a lot more different and, and it can give you different qualities? We know that just from a taste perspective, roasting on a drum roaster or roasting on a um, air roaster like the Cafe Logic, the air roasting will always give you a cleaner mouthfeel and a cleaner taste coming through your coffee, where a drum roaster will, will almost be the opposite. Now, that's both positive and negative, but already if there's different tastes just, just in coffee through the roasting process, well, then we can't actually compare the two, if that makes sense. You know, we have to take them on their own merits. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yep. I don't know if everyone agrees with that or if anyone has any questions on that. Um, I hope you have some questions on that or, or if you agree with that. That's really just what's going through my mind at the moment. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. I think um, the same with uh, contact roasters uh, are all, all can produce different results like large and small contact roasters and different, I guess if they have different powers and capacities would be different to each other. And I think the air roaster is definitely, you know, instinctively, I would think it's different as well. Um, I've done a lot of, like, as a food technologist, I've done, like, roasting of lots of different other foods, not um, not coffee, just cereals and um, vegetables and things like that. Um, so I I guess I, I, I look at things a little bit differently and I just look at, it, look at the coffee as another food, just putting another food in the air roaster. Um, mm. Yeah, so, yeah, I, th I think, uh, yeah, we look at this individual, like the, the roaster, the Cafe Logic, as um, an individual roaster with its own um, you know, nuances and things like that and, mm. uh, you know, experiment with it on hand. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Shaz. I think, I think the key behind it is, is that it's all about flavour, flavour, flavour. Chris and I will Correct. say that continuously is, is, is if the coffee tastes good, uh, let's, is, is the coffee tasting perfect or is it tasting good? Well, we don't know what perfect is because we've never got to that perfect stage with coffee yet. So then we make yeah. these adjustments and these tweaks and then we taste it and we go, is that better than what we tasted before? Or is that now pushing it to another limit? And then we yeah. will redo that or we will then adjust even further and further and i guess that's how you you figure a system out that's that's all the core profiles have have all been roasted multiple times with multiple changes and effectively um it's not about the profile looking good uh, aesthetically it's about the taste experience that it gives you um and and i would rather have a profile that doesn't look as you would expect it to look but it delivers on taste and it delivers on process. And I think that that's something that um, sets Cafe Logic apart from other roasters in its category. And when I say other roasters in its category, um, I'm talking about um, home style roasters that you have, like benchtop roasters that you have, um, yeah. where it's all about the five points that you use and this graph that just effectively goes up. And you can only change those five points by two degrees each way and by 30 seconds up or down, you know? Um, I, yeah, it, it, it should all be about taste. I mean, effectively, we drink coffee because we like the taste. We don't drink coffee because we look at a profile and then go, oh, well, I'm gonna struggle my way through these 12 cups, or these 20 cups, you know? Um, yeah. It should be based on taste. And that's just my take and my feeling on it. Um, and that's not because I'm yeah, any professional course. or anything in it, it's just, it's just how I've always resonated with coffee. I mean, if it tastes good, you want to drink it. If it doesn't yeah. taste good, then why waste your time? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Drink exactly. something else. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, so I hope that uh, I hope that kind of just just sums up how we got to the profiles. There's, there's been a lot of change and a lot of development with the profiles, um, and it's pushed myself and Chris to to sometimes discussing it at length. Uh, certain mm. points. The the point about pre-development. So the point of drying, yellowing, browning, and then the the whole sequence before first crack was something that that I believed we should, as Cafe Logic, we should attend to quite quite aggressively. Um, in that, why only focus on first crack and development from first crack um, when you have this, you know, six or seven minutes before that that you're doing something to coffee. Well, what mm. are we doing to coffee? Well, we don't know what we're doing to coffee because we don't have, you know, we, 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 there's no way of telling it unless we taste it and we manipulate it. Um, so it's about that phase for me. What are we doing to coffee before we get to first crack? And then when we get to first crack, what is happening to our coffee from first crack to when we drop our coffee? So i.e. 
development percentage. Because we actually have two forms of development percentage that we can take. We can take the development percentage from the coffee going green to yellow, and then yellow to first crack. That can be a development percentage. And we can also have a development percentage, which we have now from first crack to drop. And the key is, is what are we doing in that first part? And how does that affect our changes over first crack? And, and what are we actually doing at first crack? Like, what is what does a twenty percent coffee development mean? What and what does it taste like? What is a twenty one? What is a twenty two? What is a twenty three? Now, that just means that you've got to roast a lot of coffee, you've got to taste a lot of coffee, and you've probably got to waste a lot of coffee. And um, I actually took a picture to share with you, Justine, probably about three weeks ago or so when you asked me if I waste a lot of coffee. And I said, I'm ashamed to say that I do waste a little bit of coffee because I can't physically drink it all. Um, and it's got funky taste to it. So I can't essentially give it away. Otherwise people will say, I never want you to give me any coffee, you know? But I, I guess you, you have to go through that process to understand what works and what doesn't work. Um, and then we bring a whole different coffee into roasting uh, Justine goes out and she buys this beautiful Guatemala that we none of us have ever roasted before, and now we're putting it through the same profile, and and we might have to make these little micro adjustments, um, in order to get that profile to shine through. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I've got. Yep. I've got. Can I ask? Probably maybe for the next Q and A day or another yep. time, would you be able to explain? Um, like put up the the ready to drink profile and the you know give it give it some time you know let it rest profile and sort of explain what about it yep. is, makes it ready to drink and what about it means you know this one needs to rest a few days like um what are the differences or what what is it that in the profile that you know just in case, you know, we come across a profile that we like and then we want to make it ready to drink or we want to extend it, extend the um, rest time out. Um, okay. You know, what What would we do? Um, I, I can do that, definitely. Definitely do that. I mean, I can even do that tomorrow for you guys if you're happy with that. Um, I'm yeah. more than happy to take you through that. Um, over the last kind of 48 hours, I've been formulating uh, more of a, a clearer speech on how to give people um, more information about what makes a difference. So there's a lot of stuff that obviously goes on in the mind and it's how you take that and you, how you put that down on paper um, and the narrative behind that. So I think um, I've, I've been working on that and I, I can definitely share that with you tomorrow, Shaz, because I think it's important. I think it's important that we see what makes these profiles what and why these profiles are what we say they are. Um, and that it's, yeah. I think the big thing is it's not just fluke. It's not just kind of making a profile, tasting it and going, oh, okay, that works, you know? There mm. is actual uh, method to madness. Yeah, so I, I think, think that will also help. Yeah. yeah, oh, great. You have got a bird there, Charles. Oh, we, we have the lorikeets come visit and the cockatoos come and visit every day and they just um, yeah, beg, beg at the window. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Tell them we say how's it. So, so we've got kind of less than one minute to go, um, and that kind of covers everything for today. Unless someone has a question, I mean, we will be doing that tomorrow, Shaz, where we're explaining RTD and G and G triple T. Your good things take time. Um, and um, yeah, any other questions that you may have for this week? And then next week, I've, I've already spoken to Chris. Next week, we're going to be getting onto our of fan speed manipulation and the fan speed profile manipulation. So we'll be addressing that in a lot of detail and a lot of depth next week. Not really a roasting question, but just uh, I know I've read that Chris is working on a Bluetooth adapter. Is there any update on when to expect that? Matt, there isn't an update on when to expect that. Um, he is working on one, but he's working on multiple versions of it as well. So. Um, I can get you some form of um, information on it tomorrow and some time, um, some time kind of um, frequency. Um, but uh, let, me, let me do that tomorrow. Let me ask a question. I haven't had the discussion with him in the last couple of days about it. Sure. You're okay with that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it, it is going to change the game. Mm. Yeah.
Okay, I can get back to you on that tomorrow. Any other questions? Let me write that down. Let's see. Awesome. Well, then we'll see you all tomorrow. Please come back. We will be discussing that with what Shaz has kind of put through, and we'll be discussing that and more. So I hope to see you guys all tomorrow. Thanks, Thank Mike. you. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Bye, everyone. Cheers, cheers. Bye.